so let's talk about absolute configuration. So absolute configuration is really, really important uh, when you're talking about uh, really a lot of chemical properties of a, of a molecule because whether it's R or S will really affect a lot of things uh, and it's really important for stereochemistry. It's really how you determine, uh, it's kind of the, um, it's another way to check to, to see the relationship between two molecules if just by looking at two molecules you can't see that they're enantiomers or diastereomers or something like that. Um, so it's important to be able to do these and do these really quickly because um, once you get into doing reactions a lot of the times um, you'll be asked to assign absolute configuration on your answers just to double check. Um, so we'll do that right now. So with absolute configurations, and I sort of mentioned this, you have two options, uh, R or S, uh, and those are assigned via the, it's, I think it's called the Kahn Ingold Prelog system of naming, um, which we'll go over in a second. So R, so this means the highest priority groups Um, the highest priority groups um, around a chiral center are um, uh, arranged uh, clockwise, which I'll abbreviate CW. Um, in a way that I always uh, kind of draw my draw my arrow just to remind myself what the clockwise way is, and I also that's also kind of you're starting you're going to the right so R to the right clockwise, good way to remember it. So S is just the opposite. So you have the highest priority groups around a chiral center. Um, priority. around a chiral center are arranged counterclockwise and I just call that CC and again that's just just to show the arrow that's opposite and it's kind of going to the left um, and so when I and so when I say highest priority groups I'm referring to the atomic number So there's a couple important things to keep in mind with this priority. Hydrogen will always be the lowest priority. If you have a chiral center that has a hydrogen attached to it, that hydrogen will always be the fourth priority because it has the lowest atomic number. Um, and also, typically, if you have electronegative atoms, nitrogen, oxygen, you'll typically only have one of those connected. Um, so that's usually going to be number one. The tricky part when determining the highest priority um, is really just comes down to determining which carbon will have a higher priority. Um, which we'll we'll talk about. So, the uh, assigning the uh, the absolute configuration this this uh, system. Uh, it's we've got four steps. So first, you'll just identify all four atoms connected to the chiral center. Well, I guess step zero would be identify the chiral centers. Um, so identify. Okay, so now once you've identified them, you're going to assign priority. To, to each one of those substituents. This is where, so this is where it can get a little tricky. So step three, very closely connected to step two. So as I said, if you have like a hydrogen, that's easy because you can just throw a four on there. Step three is where it gets a little tricky because here, um, is where if you, you're dealing with two atoms of the same priority. So if two atoms have the same priority, 
Uh, and the most common case you'll have here is you'll have carbons. Um, you're going to move away from the chiral center. and identify the first point of difference. And uh, it's the first point of difference, because you, there may be other ones, but as soon as you find one, that mo then you've gotten a molecule, then you found the substitution with the higher priority. Um, and also, uh, to keep in mind, uh, Double or triple bonds count multiple times. And we'll see this. Uh, this is all going to make a lot more sense when we do the example next. Um, but if you, you know, if you've got a carbon double bonded to another carbon, then it counts as it just being bonded twice to a carbon. Um, and then finally, determine whether it's one, two, three uh, clockwise or counterclockwise. Um, this is, this is uh, and something really, really important about this step is you have to make sure that the number four priority group is on the, uh, is on the dash. Um, So it must be on the dash going into the board, the farthest away from you. If it is not, then you invert. So if you have one, two, three clockwise, but the four is on the wedge, then it's actually S, not R. You invert that absolute configuration. And again, we're going to do an example um, that kind of hits that at home. So I'm going to race over here, and we'll do that example. Okay, so what molecule do we have here? Okay, so we've got our molecule. So first, so the chiral center that we're investigating is right here. So we're going to identify all the all of the molecules that are or all the atoms that are connected to this chiral center. Uh, so I've got to draw in a hydrogen here, and that hydrogen is on the wedge uh, because we've got this NH2 already on the dash. And so for every molecule, we have two that are going to be just on lines. We've got one on a wedge and one on a dash, so that leaves, meaning the hydrogen must be on the dash. Um, so now I'm going to zoom into this chiral center, and I'm only going to draw what is directly connected to it. Okay, so as I said before, so now we're going to look at priorities. So hydrogen, when you see that, it's automatically a 4. This nitrogen, is, it's going to have a higher atomic number than carbons. So that's your 1. So those are kind of your freebies. Now you run into this issue. So we've done our first one. We've identified all atoms. Now we've assigned priority to these two, kind of the free ones. But now we're on step 3, two atoms with the same priority. Then we're going to have to move away and find the first point of difference. Okay, so let's see, what is this carbon attached to? We have an OH, and then it's double bonded to an oxygen. This carbon is connected to another carbon that's part of a ring, so I'll just, we may not need to go that far. And then we have two hydrogens. Um, so I'll label this, I'll label this guy carbon A, and this guy carbon B. Yeah. 
So we've got so they both got carbons. Now for A, there's a double bonded oxygen, so that counts for two. And then it's single bonded to another oxygen. All right, now what do we have over at this carbon? Well, it's connected to another carbon and then two hydrogens. So now I'm just going to go down the list. So these carbons were the same, that's why we are that's why we're doing this in the first place. Then A has an oxygen, B has a carbon. We stop. This is the first point of difference. Which atom has a higher priority, oxygen or carbon? Oxygen does. So, I'm just so A wins. Um and A will get the number two priority, and B gets the number three priority. Okay, we're almost there. Let me erase, uh, or no, we're all right up here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to redraw this only with the numbers. Just to make it uh, clear, it, it's a lot clearer to do it this way instead of, it can, as, as you get better, you might be able to do it straight from here, but especially in the beginning, it's important to make sure it's clear so you don't accidentally uh, mix up your R or S. So we have one, four, two, and three. So I'm looking at the one, two, three connection. So one, two, to three. Well, that's clockwise. So you might be tempted to say R. Don't say that right away because remember our, this last part here the fourth priority group must be on a uh, it must be on a dash it must be coming away it must be the farthest point away here our number four is on a wedge so even though it's clockwise um, clockwise but four not on dash so s Okay, you have to flip that absolute configuration if the four is not on the wedge, or I'm sorry, is not on the dash. Four must be on a dash in order for it, you to just go one, two, three, and then you're good. Um, this takes a little bit of practice to get used to. Just really make sure you think through it, um, and you can definitely do it. Um, another way, um, if you don't believe this, if you're having a little trouble wrapping your head around it, you can always rotate the molecule in your head by switching to any two groups, uh, and switching any two groups twice, rather, and you will see that it indeed comes out to be S once you move the four to be on the, uh, to be on the wedge instead of on the dash. So, all right, so this takes a lot of practice, but eventually you'll get really quick at it, uh, and this will, this will become almost automatic. So, all right, thanks, guys.